Hi there. Of je tekens again uh, in the last show for Awake TV Network. I've done 12 shows now for television and I'm really a bit proud of it. And my last show I will do with Case Paling and he used to be my husband. He is my husband for 33 years now. And it's really special to hear him because he's a very good writer and a collector of facts and um, well we did some business together during our marriage and but we never did a TV show together so for me this is a really special and I want to share this that we are talking about life stories together we make two books it's about life shift stories and life shift stories life shift experience I made this one with Mona Winbrand from uh, Norway and uh, we collected all those stories and we love love stories both of us and uh, because we think it's very good to tell your life story and know yourself better and we are always on a journey and then i'm talking of, uh, about the journey of the hero <coughs> we make uh, we have our difficulties and our uh, good things in our lives and it's good to to reflect sometimes on that so we hope to invite people to make these books that to encourage them and write their life story down on paper or in email and there are a lot of people who wishes to write a book so my husband Kees Paling from Netherlands he loves to help people and he now is organizing some uh, online training uh, to invite people to make their dreams come true when they want to talk about uh, making a book. He tells in his interview also about how he make a book when I became 50 years and collect 50 stories of my friends, but also from his mom and his dad. And that can be a beautiful present from yourself to your parents when they become 80 years old or 60 years old. And it's a really special remembering, remembrance, how do you say it in English? Uh, to a collector's item uh, when you write down there all your uh, hot shots in your life. So writing is really special. It's very hot in these days. Um, it's about journaling and when you will have more structure, um, Case can help you. He's a really good teacher. He tells about this and a field marshal how to map up your map out your 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 uh, collected facts issues stories with a collector and with a field marshal he helps you as a strategist how to make a book and give you some tips and tricks to do that to get out your message to the world and then he do that with a lot of jokes and fun with his jester I like very much and at the end about after the telling your story it can be also a healing process with the alchemist that you make that big transformation and then at the end there's the weaver and she makes with all those uh, lost threads and makes she she makes you weaves this piece and she makes um, yeah a, a, a whole story of it or a book and that's fun and together we also make uh, a game it's about life shift I also talked about this another show with Mona Wimbrand it is is all about your life shift stories when you when you want to change your life it can be very helpful that you write your story and uh, let us know how you want to transform it. We have uh, developed a special uh, method and this game is about that I will tell you to look back to four of your this is it this is the manual this life shift and it's all about this childhood your teenager your adult and your senior you choose for some issues and then there are some questions it's a beautiful box beautiful mate you can see it with those glowing letters on it and it's about the senior we're now seniors 
and about your childhood and when you're an adult and when you are a teenager you you choose from all these cards and there are questions and statements on these cards and sometimes you bring photos it's also possible and there is a red thread in it and you make and make knots of special occasions you don't want to forget anchors in your life but you also can untie this with special writing exercises and then you feel really the relief so there are some writing exercises by this game it's a playful game because i my slogan is you know life is a game and let's play it so you don't play it you can play it alone but you also can play it together every day you take a card you choose one and you read it maybe the turning point like this or to have more pleasure or maybe you get bored about the boring but it's about rewriting your past yeah when you want to have a new future you can rewrite your past so it's possible to write for everybody you can learn it case tells about about his workshop he will give this summer and you can consult him to make a special book for your parents or the workshop or write your own life story because i think it's a present to yourself to know who you are and take your position so you can be the king the queen or the king in your own kingdom this game also the other box i made about archetypes and talents is about being your own hero being your own leader in your own kingdom in your own life those archetypes are about 74 inner personalities gustav you talked about it and write books about it and this is about also your hidden talents who are in this treasure box your inner gold and your um your dragon is on your treasure box. So it's up to you if you leave them here or you get them away, push them away, and you can open your own treasure box and you can find your own gold. So this is about all these boxes and this writing. For now, I'm ready to interview my own husband for this special occasion. It's Kees Paling from the Netherlands. He's a writer, he, show, he will show you your, his books. And he will show you how you can participate on his workshops. So thank you. And it's up now to the interview. Hi there, Kay Spaling from the Netherlands. So special <laughs> to do an interview. My last one for Away TV Network. And he is telling me all about himself. He's my husband for 32 years already, 33 this year. And may I ask you, Kay Spaling, to introduce yourself and speak about yourself? Uh, yes, of course. Um, well, as you said, I am Kay Spaling uh, from the Netherlands. I was um, educated as a sociologist at Utrecht University, that's in the center of the Netherlands. And I am a writer, I'm a journalist, and communication consultant and a writing coach mm -hmm. and since two weeks a grandfather how funny mm -hmm. yeah and i became grandmom so there we're going to talk about we're going to talk about your life and your hobbies and i can say you are the king of the writers your book writer and we're talking also about archetypes today and you really have uh, archetype as a writer and you're also a teacher we're go also going to talk about that mm -hmm. and I know because you're my husband you're also sometimes a hermit please can you tell me something about this uh, writing we talk about this later first you were a journalist can you tell me something about that for the watchers uh, yes I've been a mm -hmm. journalist uh, since 1985 so for about 35 years now wow. um, and i wrote more than a thousand articles in daily newspapers mm -hmm. and and weekly magazines sounds quite a lot but um thousand articles 
in 35 years, well, that's, uh, you can do that. And did you do that in your free time or was it your work? Can you tell me something about it? No, I did it next to my, uh, my real job. And um, we'll talk about that later, but maybe I can tell something about uh, what I wrote about. Yes, please. Well, um, it was quite a lot. It, I, I wrote about everything that interested me and that was a lot. Mm -hmm. I used to say um, it was from re royalty to reincarnation <laughs> and from book reviews to military history. Very different. That's very different, yes. For instance, I, I wrote about the, the fall of the Romanovs. Mm -hmm. I was very fascinated by the story. I still want to, play, to write a book one day, but I don't have the time yet. But um, I like the mystery. The mystery about uh, did they really die? Uh, what happened? Um, even when the remains were found in the last century in Russia, there still was a lot of people uh, saying, well, well, maybe, maybe not. And you never know. Is this about the, fact, the facts or the fantasy? What did you strike the most? Um, it's, it's both of it. Uh, but I like the mystery, of course, uh, the best. Hmm. Because I also collected some books about it. Mm -hmm. uh, very old ones sometimes. But there was a book about the saving of the Tsarevich. Mm -hmm. uh, the son of the Tsar. There were different books about on Anastasia who survived. Mm -hmm. um, and there were even other books about um, other grand duchess, uh, the daughters of the Tsar who survived. So mm -hmm. who knows? Who knows? Yeah. And other things. Can you tell me more? Uh, yes. And another uh, example is. Uh, and a big article about uh, the royal houses of the East European states. Mm -hmm. um, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, they became independent again. Mm -hmm. And um, the question was, what happens to the royal houses of Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia, and lots of them? So it was fun to, uh, to dive into that kind of history. But also you also wrote, did uh, uh, very different uh, subjects. Can you tell me the other things you were writing about? Really different stuff. Yes, I, I did uh, several articles on, on near-death experiences. And why uh, about that? I, I've, I found it fascinating. Also the it mystery. Was, the mystery was, was the mystery and it was <laughs> maybe the glimpse of the afterlife. What mm. happens then? Mm. And I, I love the, the stories about uh, the tunnel and the light and the, the meetings and the encounters with, with spiritual beings and angels. Did you ever have such an experience yourself that you would like to write about this? No, no, no. It's just uh, the, the interest and the fascination with uh, the, the subject, the story itself. Well, we have a daughter, Kathleen, and she's yes. also a journalist and writer. Mm -hmm. And you also work with her. Can you share something about that? Yes, it's of course it's great to, mm -hmm. to work together with your own daughter. And, um, and a lot of years ago, it was the 50th anniversary of, maybe you know the term, um, the summer of love. Uh, the, 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 the great days of the hippies, the hippie movement in the United States. For, uh, for the hippie dresses and everything, yeah. And my daughter was uh, studying in Berkeley at the moment. And we, uh, we decided to make an article about the difference between the hippies in the 60s and the, the hipsters um, at that moment in Berkeley. So and we found really, out that the, yeah. the greatest difference was uh, that uh, hipsters, um, they use all their, the money they have to look poor. Yeah. That's very funny. <laughs> really funny. And that's the gesture. You also like the funny thing. And you can read in your books and articles also the funny stuff. I like this very much. Mm -hmm. Because only, uh, otherwise it would be only facts and history. So this little jokes in between makes it very funny. Mm -hmm. But you write and you're really a storyteller. 
you like to tell stories about other people, your own stories. And in a job you did something with writing. Can you tell me more about that? What you did, did for a daily living? Uh, yes, I was a communication consultant, mm -hmm. if you may call it. And that's in fact uh, how I earned my money most of the time. Mm -hmm. Because you can write books in, in Holland, in, in the Netherlands, but you can't pay the rent with that. No, that's for sure. And for, in fact, for more than 40 years, I worked for the Dutch government. Mm -hmm. And half of the time I was uh, in communication. Mm -hmm. In the last 10 years, for instance, I was a spokesman at the Inspectorate of, uh, of Healthcare. Okay. <coughs> with this Corona crisis at hand, uh, I feel sorry now for my uh, former colleagues, mm. but because it, it must be very busy now. Yeah, they will be busy because last year you were retired. Yeah, got yep. your retirement, so that gives you more free time. Mm -hmm. And you did also something with copywriting and the messenger, bring your messages outside. Yeah. Can you tell me about this? Yes, uh, as you know, we were a young family. Mm -hmm. And we, we could use uh, some extra income. Oh, yeah. So uh, for about 10 years, I did also some uh, copywriting for uh, companies. And um, I wrote uh, brochures and advertisement about uh, recycling, but also in the cultural sector. I wrote uh, things for uh, the Rembrandt house in mm -hmm. Amsterdam, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Did you like that to do? Uh, it was a, a, a real challenge. I loved it. Mm -hmm. And it paid better than the books. Yeah. And in between the reading yourself in your own books and making books, articles, copywriting, you also love to listen to the music. What yes. What is this music for you, privately? Um, well, music is a, a real other world. And I, I love it. I love to, to listen to music. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to play some music on my guitar sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, uh, I, I used to love, of course, the, the pop music from my, uh, as, as a youngster and in my student life. I still like it. Uh, but I also uh, discovered uh, classical music. What's your favorite? Can you share? In, in classical? Yes. Um, it all started with Claude Debussy, mm -hmm. and uh, in, but in the end, I, I I especially loved some English composers like Ralph von Williams and uh, Frederick Delius, mm. composers um, many people never heard of, and that's a shame. It's a big, because they made very nice music. And what brings music to you, Kay Spanning? Um, well, uh, it, it's uh, <laughs> more or less a spiritual experience and uh, it brings peace also in your head. Mm. It's, uh, it's great. Mm. Because writing is inspiring yourself, it's empowering yourself. You really mm. think, feel the king in your own writer's kingdom. But um, it's also making this fundament in a book. You have to structure things. You make a foundation about a book. Because mm -hmm. I'd love to talk with you after this about your first book. You collect things with a collector. Yeah. That is fundament. And then there is the field marshal. Which step you have to take first. He's the strategist. Mm -hmm. And you need that with your framework in a book, isn't it? Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, you the end, the Sorry? Weaver. The weaver will be the, at the end. Mm -hmm. And he makes this weaving piece what makes the whole book. Yes. Difficult, that making this weave piece, or not? Yes. It's the finishing touch, more the or less. Finishing touch, the and the fun is in the collecting, I think. Yes, in the collecting the material and, and the facts, and mm -hmm. also the mm -hmm. whatever you need for a book. Hmm. Whether it's fiction or non-fiction. Hmm. You made it both? You made fiction and non-fiction? Yes, I did both. And I did uh, life stories or auto... Uh, uh, no, not auto, just biographies. Hmm. And um, for all these, you need uh, the material. 
before you can start weaving the yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah, and collecting so you, things. Can you tell me something about your first bookcase? Really? Well, um, it took some time before the first book was there. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, I felt a, a writer all my life. Yeah, tell me about your youth. You were already writing in your youth, wasn't it? When you were a yeah. kid? As, as a youngster, I wrote uh, notebooks full of, of stories. I, I wrote it um, by hand. Mm. And um, well, uh, many years ago, I, I rediscovered these notebooks, and well, it was terrible. <laughs> and th the most important thing was that I was very enthusiastic. And you draw also make these little drawings, wasn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, next to the uh, to the stories, uh, I, I made short stories, and I made a lot of uh, first chapters. Okay. Yeah, I used a typewriter by then. Yeah. And um, I had to learn a lot. So I made 50 first chapters or mm -hmm. 50 books. And after the first chapter, I didn't know where it would go. So I stopped. And uh, that was my, uh, my big lesson. You, mm -hmm. have to, you have to know the plot, mm -hmm. at least some structure before you really can start. Did you have a teacher? I know you have a lot of books about writing and mm -hmm. collect them too, me too. But was there a teacher in your life about writing books of how you have to make a plot or something? Or did you all learn by yourself? I partly by myself, but I, I just read a lot of books. I love reading books, of course. Mm -hmm. And I, I read a lot of books of uh, how you do it, mm -hmm. how to make a book, how to make a story, uh, what, what you have to think about. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what are the danger? Uh, Money blocks. <laughs> <laughs> writing blocks. Writing blocks. <laughs> yeah. It's um, yes. So Sometimes I, I I had one uh, a real writing block. I was um, I I wrote a scene and then I said, um, well, I didn't know for two days. Uh, this guy has to leave this room through that door, but how will I <laughs> write it? Mm. And it was so simple, in fact. You better can you start. You have your own blocks and you recover them. And now we talk about this later in this interview. You will be a teacher yourself in writing books. Yes. Great. So writing a book is putting everything in this soup and make this things you collect, your facts, your things, your stories, and make a good soup. Especially you like to be a good cook, cook too, isn't it? Yes, not a good, good uh, soup, but a tasty soup. That's the difference. So it's a creative process, is writing. And mm -hmm. can you tell me some more about your first book? So you did all those things, you did your, yeah, your stories, your articles, your copywriting. And I'm really curious about this first book. Can yes. you remember? It's a long time ago, isn't it? It's a long time ago. It was, uh, well, um, 35 years ago. Wow. That's and um, I was working at the ministry, mm -hmm. culture. Yeah. And um, in my free time, I was thinking, I had been wondering for years, about things, uh, how we as a species, uh, human beings, uh, how we see reality. I read mm -hmm. a, uh, a lot of books about it. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to write a book about it myself. It was, um, I have it here. I have, it was published in, in Dutch. It's like this. The world is half a waarheid. That was your yes. first in book? English, in English, it would be uh, the world as half truth. Okay. And, um, and an introduction to psychology. Mm -hmm. And if I were to write it now, at this moment, it would probably uh, focus on, on, um, on fake news. Yeah, be very indoctrinated. Well, this, yeah. this was uh, 30 years ago, not 35, 30 years ago. I looked very different than did those days. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. But um, my question was, um, what part of the world um, 
do we really know from our own experience? And the most things you, you, you hear at school and, and from the media, um, not at first hand, but second, third or fourth. And uh, for instance, uh, how do you know there is a South Pole? I don't know. I, I've never been there, but... You haven't been me. there. They so how me. do you know? <laughs> I read it. I saw it on the, on the television or whatever. Yeah. Yes, but you never know. If no, you can be sure, sure about I'm that. Of course, the truth. Mm -hmm. Did we really... Uh, uh, did we, have we really been on the moon? No. There are very funny uh, videos about uh, astronauts walking in a studio, yeah. mm -hmm. pretending to be on the moon. <laughs> and there are a lot of uh, people still thinking that it, 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 it just isn't ain't true. But uh, mm -hmm. well, th this is what the book is about. What do we really know and how can we be sure? Yeah. So what did you, more? this was your first book? Really yes. special? because we don't know. And it was a good mm -hmm. question to, to ask to, to, to the world. Yeah. I write a book about this. But you have very different, written very different books. Can you show me? You have them there or what? Uh, well, the second I haven't here in, in Dutch, but I, uh, I recently translated it. It was, uh, I call it now like this. Okay. A Rhythm for a, a Warlord. Okay. And I, I wrote it um, in the days that the Germany was reunited. Okay. And I realized I didn't really know much about German history. Mm. Um, we, we never talked or, or thought about Germany because, well, we were once occupied by the Germans and my parents didn't like Germany. No, but so war, yeah. I didn't know anything about it. So I was fascinated. Uh, what really happened in Germany and well the problem was a lot of people uh, authors were writing the same book mm -hmm. all about this uh, historic moment mm -hmm. so I found um, uh, I had to find another way to to make the book and how did you do that I found an, uh, a German officer mm -hmm. uh, a soldier in general um, we who um well he grew up in in the um german empire mm -hmm. and from 1870 mm -hmm. and he um he was witness to all kind of things in 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 germany including the fall of prussia and and the upcoming of the the nazis mm -hmm. and uh, it was a very special uh, story to tell okay um, people can read that I, I'm very curious about all those books you have written anymore. So, Mr. Van Daal, I've sent here, and we wrote also a book together. So, can you tell me? Um, well, first, uh, I, I was a, I, I am still a sociologist, so I'm interested in, in uh, so, uh, things that happen and develop in, in society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it was five years till the millennium. And I was wondering what would happen to society, to the way people think. Yeah. Uh, to the year 2000. So I made a book uh, with a comparison with uh, the century before, mm -hmm. the Fan de Schekle. Mm -hmm. And there was a strange mix of, um, well, people frightened of the new developments. And the other side was that they were. And had a lot of hopes that technology would bring special things. Mm -hmm. And this strange mix, I was um, speculating, would probably be uh, still there or again um, nearing the millennium. Mm -hmm. So I made a book about, uh, well, th these developments. Um, and next, when I found out that nothing really happened. <laughs> As usual. I remember, I remember we were in, uh, in, in LA mm. in 1999 as a family mm. and I interviewed uh, one of the producers for th the biggest party ever. Yeah, in the we desert, were, I know, I remember. We'll yeah. be in the desert in California, five mm -hmm. days, uh, the 50 best pop groups of all the, of the world. Mm -hmm. It would be the concert of, uh, of centuries. 
-hmm. And in the end, it uh, it didn't work out. It, uh, there was there was no concert, and there were a lot of things that uh, that weren't there. Yeah. So I was um, I was a bit angry, and and I wrote another book, <laughs> and it was my first fiction, uh, Mr. Van Dalen and the Apocalypse. And what was uh, that about? Can you tell me shortly? Because of time, we want to mention all. Yes, yes. I, I, I told a story about uh, someone um, who saw all things uh, falling apart in in the last eighty days of the of the century. Uh, but nobody listened, and then it uh, it all. It happened? Oh no! Yes, it all went wrong. <laughs> So at, at least at my, I had my uh, my success. Uh, it happened in the book. This so uh, nothing happened to, uh, except the fireworks, of course. Mm -hmm. But nothing Did happened you, uh, in reality. Can you Sorry. Show it? Can you show the book? Um, Do I have it here. Oh yes, this is this is the Van de Schekle book. Okay. Thank you. Um, this is Mr. Van Dalen and the Apocalypse. Yes, that was your first fiction, wasn't it? My first novel, yeah. The first novel, yeah. And uh, I, I grew up, as you see in uh, the picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then this winter, I have another book, The Orange Coop. Is this this book or another one? Um, no, in between, was, there was a book of, of us together mm -hmm. yeah. about uh, learning disorders. Mm -hmm. It was your your job, your your um, your institute. Yeah. For then we started to puzzle together, making books. Mm -hmm. And we did it later on last uh, winter. But a year ago, you wrote a little book about Tolkien, and that was really interesting for the Tolkien people yes. who like Tolkien. Well, I'll just show this one. Oh, yeah. I was very interested in, in, in uh, the coup d'etat. It was a mm -hmm. fascinating uh, subject for me mm -hmm. because uh, why do uh, uh, some coups uh, succeed and others don't? Mm -hmm. And um, but I, I thought about um, something in, in the fiction. Mm -hmm. So this is from 2007. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the Houses of Parliament in Holland. Mm -hmm. And you see, uh, the author is changed again. <laughs> but um, I, I, I just uh, imagined uh, our, our crown prince uh, planning a coup, mm -hmm. uh, and and it all happened and it succeeded. Also fiction it was, was it? Fiction. It was pure fiction. Yes. But for the the technical part, the oh, I went to the Ministry of Defense. I have some friends there. Mm -hmm. And um, although it was fiction, I was almost shocked that they were so willing to help with uh, technical stuff. Mm -hmm. on how can you manage to 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 make a successful coup? Yeah, it was, it was very funny to do. I had things like uh, somewhere in Holland, I need uh, twenty um, tanks, and. Um, how can I get them, Centurion tanks? I'll get them to uh, to The Hague, and, and how long will it take? How fast can they drive? And uh, well, that's funny. Funny, all those Dutch history, uh, looking people to Wake TV Network from Asia, America, Australia, <laughs> and Europe. So maybe they know Tolkien in America. Maybe can, you can talk about that book, please. Yes, yes. I, um, of course, it's it's a pity that that all these books are in Dutch. Yeah. And uh, we were already working uh, on on more and more uh, online and and things in 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 English. Mm -hmm. So I thought uh, the best thing you can do when you have a good idea, uh, just write it in English. So this was the first book I wrote directly in English, and of course I had it uh, checked by native speaker. Mm -hmm. Because um, I know some English, but not that good. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought um, I liked the books and the movies, of course, uh, about uh, Lord of the Rings and Tolkien. Everybody likes them. And it was also a very um, beautiful book and biography of an English uh, writer mm -hmm. about the group of writers um, 
um, next to to Tolkien in in when he was in Oxford, mm -hmm. and they called to the they were called the Inklings, and I knew that uh, some of them uh, on a yearly basis uh, went out for a tour, a walking tour. So I said uh, to myself, well, why don't I write uh, a story about one of these tours? Mm -hmm. And I have um, Tolkien and C.S. Lewis and two others of the Inklings um, walk four days somewhere in England. And my question was, uh, what do they talk about? So I read all their books, all their diaries, all the letters. Um, and all the biographies about them. Mm -hmm. And I made a lot of notes. And I started um, writing. And I made a lot of dialogues. Uh, they're very witty. And I think it, it was a, it, it's a nice book. It's, it became this book, A Rumor of Adventure. First English book. The first English one. You see. Yeah, Doctor. there is again. Please again. <laughs> Chess is there again. Look, yeah. my husband changed every book with a photo on the back side. <laughs> so, so, we'll see about the next one. Huh? But, but then, this winter, we published together two books. It's about yeah. life shift stories mm -hmm. and get your retirement. So, there came a new hobby for you in your free time. You love yeah. to write. And there we see, that was my observation nearby him. Uh, that you were really a teacher, a teacher to learn, and I was a teacher too. So now there will be a new episode. There mm -hmm. will be alchemic processes during the writing because the right of the three and will be combined in the future. Yep. So you have new plans. You're retired now, you want to do things which you like to do. And that's reading, writing, sharing your knowledge, your, all your life build on. So we can enjoy this knowledge by this new writing coaching you're intended to do. Can mm -hmm. you tell us more about this? Yes, I, I have a lot of experience now as, as a writer. Mm -hmm. and, um, in, in the last year books, I, I already used uh, the experience I had with uh, publishing on Amazon with the, the other two books. Yes. So um, that worked out very well. Um, mm -hmm. But my knowledge and my experience with the writing mm -hmm. and planning a story and, and uh, how to get it finished also and published. Yeah. I would like to um, give, yes, I would like to use it to help other people. And especially for novels, of course, and, and, and history, whatever, but uh, especially for life stories. Yeah, and stories. Um, yeah. I'm 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 working now and I'm busy already on on uh, social media like Facebook and yeah. Instagram and and uh, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. telling something about uh, the writing process, and um, I, I I make a difference between um, a product and and a process. And Can you tell me more about this? This product and process. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, the product is of course uh, the book in the end, mm -hmm. and it is really great to have a book. We yeah. have a book published and to I'm not from the ebooks, but <laughs> but I, I like, like the paper feel, in your hands. I want to feel a book in my hands, yes. I'm a paperback writer, yes. <laughs> paperback writer. Right. Yeah. Just go on, but, uh, This is about the product. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's great. Uh, when my first book was published, I I was invited by the publisher and there was a in a room with all the um, people working at the, the mm. publishing company and we had champagne and it was very, it was great. And but it, none of the other books I had did. <laughs> no book champagne anymore. It's a pity. No. Yeah. But the other side is the process, mm. getting there. And uh, the nice part about uh, writing a book, it's, it's, it's one big puzzle, a big mm. great puzzle and you want to solve it. Mm. And um, it's really a creative process, and, and I like yeah. it very much. Oh, yeah. But that's where people got stuck in this process. That's yes. why you had the idea that you want to help people, because mm -hmm. when you ask somebody and you tell about their dreams, yeah. then, then they, they, 
a lot of them dream of writing a book about themselves, about their family, about a father or mother. Yeah. yeah. So what is about you? What did you do? What is your plan? Well, um, first of all, um, for me, it's no longer uh, as a youngster to start a chapter in your no. enthusiasm mm -hmm. and then get, st get stuck. No. So how is the story going to end or no, nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now I take the time. Eh? It takes time, of course. It, it, sure. it should develop yeah. and it should grow. Um, to have a plot or at least a structure, you must know where you go to. Yeah, where you're heading to, mm -hmm. and um, and sometimes people think, well, that's not creative, and it, mm -hmm. it should be in a flow. But I think that's nonsense. Uh, the writing of each chapter, yeah, uh, there's still a not lot of creativity. You you always change the story while writing. I think so. You need you need the plot and you need the structure. Yeah, I I told you about this alchemic process. People, mm -hmm. you like, and me too, hear and write about their own life story. And yeah. then we talk about this transformation, this healing exercise. Can you tell me more about this? Yes, it's the same uh, difference between the product and the process. Mm -hmm. The product is the life story itself, uh, the book or the chapter. Mm -hmm. And like in life stories, we had chapters yes. uh, of life shift. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the other side is the process that is yes. maybe even more important uh, it can be writing can be an, an healing exercise you're writing about your own life uh, yeah how you felt uh, your feelings your traumas your pain mm -hmm. but also your joy yeah and uh, the good thing about writing is that it creates some distance that's for sure uh, yeah yeah, that, that's what I want to share too as a psychotherapist. Uh, it's also about journaling. It doesn't have to be just a book or a mm -hmm. story. It can also be an exercise in journaling. What's going yeah. on in their life. And to keep that distance, to observe themselves. Yeah. Yes. It's good for reflection and, and review. Distance and, uh, from the pain, you told me. Yes. Yes. Um, it's not long ago that they found out in in, um, in the United States mm -hmm. that what they used to do with with traumas mm. to directly relive what happened mm. in in the therapy mm -hmm. uh, that it uh, it doesn't really work. Mm. It makes it really worse. Yeah. When you really live it at, uh, almost directly. Mm -hmm. um, it is better to to leave it for some months and then start uh, writing, describing what happened, mm -hmm. and not as a victim, but as a witness, more or less. Mm -hmm. And then you create some distance between what happened mm -hmm. and how you felt, mm -hmm. and you can look at it with in another way. Yeah. And, and feel better, and you can handle it better. Yeah. So that's what you can do also in, in life stories. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also write another kind of life story, uh, a story of someone else. Yeah. Um, for instance, yeah. um, I wrote this one. And this is the story of my father. Hmm. <laughs> um, that's him. Yeah. And I made a, a small booklet on, on his life, mm. about his life, and um, the product is nice, of course. I could present it to him uh, a few months before he died. Mm. And, um, but even more important for me and for him was the process. I, uh, I had to ask him a lot of things about mm. his youth, about his parents, about his life. Your friends? And his girlfriend, and there were a lot of surprises and unexpected uh, things we never heard. Of. But this time he wanted to share anything, and then the beautiful yeah. process. It was a beautiful process, and you did it also for your mom, didn't you? I did the same for my mom, and that was this booklet mm -hmm. about her. Yeah, right. she died uh, well more than a year ago. 
but um, uh, I gave the book uh, when she became uh, on her 80th birthday. Mm. And um, well, the, the book is great, but the process is better even. Mm. So I you can help people. Real. Yeah, you can help people to make such a book for one of the parents or a special occasion. And yes. the people, you you can be the ghostwriter for them, or they make the book themselves, and you help them in the process, isn't it? Yes, I can advise them how they can do it. Mm. And because the process is it is very important that they do it themselves. Yeah. with their parents or sure. about who, whoever they want to write a book about and sure. because the connection and and the way you you talk about things is is quite important beautiful process yeah mm -hmm. so you help people with a life story uh, or a, a chapter we did that i already mentioned in the life story books yes. and also together we developed a game and that game is about life shift. So that was your slogan. If you don't like your future, rewrite your past. So can you tell me something about this writing process, Case? Uh, yes. Um, for instance, when somebody thinks he's, he's, uh, he's been a loser for all his life, mm. um, you can also look differently at your, uh, at your past. Mm. Um, you say well, all kind of traumatic experiences. Mm. I see also see a lot of people using their own bad experience, mm. yeah. mm -hmm. and, uh, people who learn to handle it, mm. um, to help others with the yeah. same experiences and traumatic experiences. Mm. So you can turn it around also. Mm. Uh, you can, in fact, rewrite your, uh, your life story. Mm by saying from all these things were apparently necessary, yeah. necessary to make me the person I am now. Mm. And what can I do with it? Mm. The How other can journey? I make a new future? Yeah, yeah. And they are all journeys of the hero, isn't it? You make a lot of journeys in your that's, life. That's, that also, that's part of life that you... Um, uh, you don't have always the top of the mountain. You sometimes you have to climb it, and then you fall off, and then you have to climb again. And mm. Mm. yeah, it all takes time and effort, and mm. but it's all worth it. And it's uh, and yeah. you can do it. And it's great also to encourage people to make that life shift. So we mm -hmm. we make these two books, uh, one book together, and the other I wrote with Ma with uh, Mona Wimbrand from Norway. But your intention is also to collect this life story once a year for the life story series. So we can yes. create. You can, next to the life shift uh, experience, uh, the books. Um, I would love to make um, at least one book a year about life stories. Mm. Um, sometimes people don't want to write a whole book about themselves mm. or about someone else. Mm -hmm. But maybe they can write a, a chapter with sure. their life story. And I can collect these life stories mm -hmm. and I put them in a book. Yeah. And they have uh, their own life story published. Yeah. And then in the end, we, we are busy creating a world library of life stories. That would be wonderful. Wouldn't, yes, wouldn't that be great? But much great is that you can help these people. You're really a teacher. Mm -hmm. So... Um, what you're up to this next uh, year uh, to col to combine this writer in you and help people to make their own writing stories and teach them how to do it. How do you want to do this, uh, Case? I want to make uh, some some workshops and and, and uh, also an online course, a writing mm -hmm. course, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to start with things and and to. Uh, to work in, in such a way that you don't get really stuck. Mm. Uh, I want to advise people and I want to help them with that. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, I'm, I have my Facebook page, a writer's Wonderful. diary. Yeah. How do you call it? A writing diary? A writer's diary. Writer's diary, okay. And um, you can find it on Facebook. Okay. And uh, every now and then I, I publish a small uh, piece of advice mm -hmm. about writing mm 
Mm. And but it also will soon be available um, a free ebook for people to well to start. Mm. What do you have to do to to really start? I know a lot of people are thinking about it. Yeah, they will in the Netherlands. <laughs> Sorry. So once they want to write a book, sometimes somewhere, yeah. Yes, in in Holland we have about seventeen million people, mm. and there are um, two million people still saying, uh, "One one day I will write a book." Mm. So you and help them true. to make their dream come true. Yes. But there is also an, another million who yeah. is struggling with writing a book. And it's, that's not necessary. No. You don't have to struggle. I mean, everyone can make a book. Um, we used to have a book in, in Holland with, with uh, blank pages. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was a book. Yeah. And you, can't, uh, you could write in it uh, yourself. Yeah. It was more or less a notebook. So, yeah. but yeah. you can also ask uh, a chimp, uh, a chimpanzee. Uh, you put it, uh, there are a lot of videos about it. You, you, you made them sit ne next to the typewriter and they start typing. <laughs> and they make five, five, uh, 500 uh, pages. Yeah. And put it in a book. And it's not a story, of course, but it's a book. How you can make a book? I'm not joking it? now. The Chester now is uh, is very <laughs> very busy, but mm -hmm. uh, I want to end this interview very seriously and ask you, Kay Spaling, where people can reach out for you. Can you tell me? And tell, can you tell the watchers? Yes, I'm still working on my website, but you can find me on Facebook, a writer's diary. Mm -hmm. Um, the two books in English you can find on Amazon. Just um. Uh, Find me on my name, Case Paling, mm -hmm. and um, you can you can also write me an email, um, Case M Paling at gmail dot com, and uh, in the end we'll show it. So you're welcome. Thank you for this. Uh, people are waiting for your soon available free ebook. How they can start writing and mm -hmm. yeah. So thank you for participating in this interview. It was my last one on the Wake TV network. I am very happy that I can do this today with my husband. And thank you for participating, Case, and tell me all about your books. And when people uh, feel invited, they're very welcome. So thank you very much. Okay. And speak to you soon. Bye bye. 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 So this was really fun, this interview with my own husband. I never did a TV show with him. I did a lot of things in the 33 years, but the TV show we never did before. So um, I want to thank you for your um, interest to listen to my uh, shows the last 12 weeks. I learned a lot of it and I try to put some teachers of mine and special people to put them in the light and who were connected also with my work life, my personal life. I was really happy uh, for and gratitude for this opportunity. So Amanda Meisters, thank you very much for this opportunity. Maybe next season I will be back on the way to where I'm not sure yet. But for now, I want to thank Kees Paling for this interview. And you will see and I hope you understand that it is possible when your dream is to make a book. It is possible. But some people has to learn something about language, how to build a sentence, how to build a chapter, and how to build a book. So you can, it, it's, it's worthwhile to invest in these things that people can be helped by somebody. In case it's a good person to do, they has a lot of experience writing articles, books for years, 35 years. So. Feel welcome to connect with him. You can reach out for him about his uh, mail. His website is on the construction. It's keysmparling at gmail.com. And keysparling is key, E E S, P, and then M, and then P A L E N G dot com. No, sorry. It's about keysparling at gmail.com. Thank you 
and reach out or send me an email. It was fun to have all those listeners and watches this last 12 weeks. Thank you for watching on the We TV, Awake TV Network. And maybe we'll speak another time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.